So I was gonna wait for the dog to stop barking and then another one started barking. I don't know when they're gonna stop. Oh, now my dog is barking. Hey guys, welcome back. Today I thought it would be interesting if we went over some common household items that are major contributors to micropollution. I did a lot of research on this and everything that I'm about to show you is things that I just found in my house in the last 15 minutes kind of walking around looking for specific items. Um, nothing was anything that I had to go out and buy. Um, everything was just kind of laying around, although I did have to go downstairs and raid my little sister's bathroom to find some of her cosmetic products. Other than that, everything was pretty much just in my own room or down in our basement. So. Here we go. So first up today, we have synthetic fibers that come from athletic clothes and outdoor gear, like these leggings. So in my research, I found that products made out of acrylic, polyester, and nylon are some of the major contributors to these microfibers that we find when we are doing um, micropollution trawls and when there's different studies that are done on surface water to determine if there's any micropollution present. In 94% of samples taken in US waterways, evidence of microfibers present. So that just goes to show you that in addition to releasing microfibers into the air, just as a natural process of their degradation, um, millions of particles of these microfibers can be washed into our waterways every single time you do a wash that contains some kind of synthetic clothing. So every time I work out and then throw my stuff into the wash, um, millions of microfibers are being washed directly into our waterways. So what's a solution to that? Uh, there's a lot actually consider using products or purchasing products um, that are made out of more natural sources such as cotton or another solution would be it fitting your washing machine with a filter or a little ball that can collect microplastics um, there's a lot of these different balls ones called I think Cassie ball um, and you can just put those in your washing machine and these um, microfibers are especially difficult to be removed in um, water treatment plants and so it is so important to be conscious about how many times you're washing your garments and then try to find new ways to wash that are a little bit more eco-conscious like I mentioned with the ball um, or with a filter in your washing machine to ensure that you are not contributing um, to these microfibers being in the waterways, being in the ocean, being in the bay, being in your rivers, being wherever you are. So the next product that I have are wipes that are made out of um, polyester, polyethylene, or polypropylene. These wipes are a mixture of both natural fibers and plastics. The plastics are woven in to preserve the fibers and to make sure that the wipes remain effective over time. Um, but the more wipes you wash down your toilet or if you throw them in your trash can and then you know, hope you never see them again, um, the greater your contribution to fatbergs. Fatbergs are these masses of different types of pollution, they're different sewage, they're also um, toilet paper, and then these wipes are a huge issue. I know that I've seen tons of pictures of London fatbergs, um, and they're really, really disgusting. They're a huge issue to deal with, and over time, they just leach plastics into the water. And the more these plastics degrade, the harder it is to filter them out in the sewage treatment facilities. And so it's really dangerous to continue to um, use these disposable wipes. And so what is the solution to that? Well, you can just use um, traditional all cotton flannel um, to wash your hands, or you can use a cotton washcloth, um, or you can just air dry. So different options there. So next up, we have paint, especially what we call thermoplastic paint. So thermoplastic paints are a major contributor to micropollution as well. Um, in addition con to containing these dangerous compounds called VOCs, volatile organic compounds, which, contrib which contribute to photochemical smog, um, thermoplastic paints also often have plastics in them. Um, and so as these paints degrade, as they are weathered off of the side of houses or just run off of streets, um, they enter into the ocean. And in a lot of cases, we found that there is some residual paint on the surface of oceans, even in remote areas such as Alaska. So this paint right here, it's from Benjamin Moore, is a VOC free um, option 
it is eco-friendly because it is so low VOC and it's a latex based paint. So when you look for paints, if you want to be a little bit more eco-conscious, you want to look for something that is water or latex based. Um, and these paints will not degrade um, microplastics and do not contain VOCs in them. And so they're a little bit safer both for your family and then also for the environment. They are a great option to look into. Um, and if you're trying to be a little bit more sustainable, maintain a more eco-conscious lifestyle, I would highly recommend looking into a paint that is supported by one of these um, green seal brands. According to the Plastic Soup Foundation, nearly one third of all fibers found in the air are plastics. And these plastics do not just come from our clothing. In addition to our clothing, they also can come from super soft plushy animals like Mr. Pear here. Mr. Pear is actually a double whammy because in addition to being made out of polyester fibers, inside, a little bit of ASMR, you can probably hear it, those are also plastic pellets. So if I were to cut Mr. Pear open on accident or if my dog were to get into him, which at some point she probably will, if I were to rub Mr. Pear, thousands of microfibers are being released into the air just by um, his natural process of degrading. So we have Mr. Pear. Also, um, we have major cleaning products. Right now in the home cleaning industry, microfiber rags, mops, whatever you wanna use, are very much in. This is an example of one. Um, and these rags are especially great because they use less chemicals, they're better for cleaning up dust, um, or so we're told. But in addition to doing this, um, these rags are made from highly synthetic materials. Um, and these materials, just like Mr. Pear, right here, <laughs> slowly break down over time and will enter into our air and then our waters, or our water and then our air. They'll get into both. So it's great that we're using less chemicals, yes, but we also need to be conscious of what we are putting directly into our air. Um, even if the chemicals themselves are not in as high demand, um, the fibers that we're using to make these products are just as dangerous, and we are severely lacking in studies that are going on about what these microfibers are doing to the human body. We have tan Tampons. Tampons are another product that can unfortunately contain synthetic fibers um, and that's a little scary because if you know how a tampon works you don't want fibers where they're going. So what is a solution for using these synthetic fiber tampons? Invest in cotton tampons. These on the back say that they're both cotton and polyester. I would probably say that they're more often than not like primarily polyester if they're not giving me the exact percentage. Um, that's typically how it works. They'll just have a little bit of poly, a little bit of cotton thrown in there for fun, um, just to say that there is, but they're primarily polyester. Um, and then when you remove them and you throw them out, they're going straight to a landfill where they then break down and then you have even more microfibers. So. We have everything from tampons, to my leggings, to microfiber rags, to Mr. Pear. These are all different examples of things that contribute to microfibers, and microfibers, again, are present in a vast majority, and I mean a vast majority of water samples. Next up, we have microbeads from various cosmetic products. I can remember a couple years ago when it first became more mainstream knowledge that these microbeads were very bad for the environment. I had to go downstairs to my little sister's bathroom um, because I have long since purged my own bathroom of any sort of product that contains microbeads. But this was one of my favorites in middle school. Do a little beauty thing now. I don't know if you can see it. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that little pink dot. That little pink dot that I just showed you is an example of a microbead. Um, so this product, Neutrogena, is very well known for using these micro products. Yes, they exfoliate your skin well, but also they wash directly down into our waterways when you just wash them off your face um, and then you find them later as they break down. Um, microbeads are very dangerous because they are known to bind to toxic chemicals in your waterways um, and then slowly leach them. So if microbeads were to be eaten by a marine organism that have been um, already contaminated with toxic chemicals that are in the bay, maybe present from a sewage treatment plant or um, from a factory upstream, then that animal is now contaminated themselves um, because these microbeads will slowly leach out into the animal whatever kind of toxic chemical they have um, been contaminated with. Another one is this Morning Burst Facial Cleaner, another great beauty product. Okay, there we go. Morning Burst, love that. 
Um, yeah, another one that feels great, and then you realize the environmental consequences of what you're using, and it suddenly doesn't feel so great anymore. There are other ways to exfoliate that are more natural. Charcoal is an excellent example of an exfoliator um, that is not as toxic, but even when you're using charcoal, you still need to be aware of what is in your charcoal. Here's another um, beauty product. On the surface, these look fantastic. Charcoal, a natural exfoliator. Can't wait, it's gotta be eco-friendly, right? So close, but not quite. These strips contain um, silicon-based products as well as um, parabens. And so both of these are examples of um, plastic-based products that can contaminate our waterways and they are found residually on the surface of many different rivers and the bay um, and really all over the United States. They've also been found in more remote areas such as in Alaska. A 2015 study found that cosmetic ingredients um, such as parabens and silicon-based products are, of, are emerging pollutants and are of a severe environmental concern. They found um, traces of these in polar bears in Alaska all the way down to um, fish in the Everglades. Just to show you how widespread this use of parabens are, this is an ancient tanning um, product that I also found in my little sister's bathroom. And then this is my chlorine removing swim shampoo. I'll give you another one. Nice. This is my chlorine removing swim shampoo. Um, both of these on the back say that, the, say that they contain um, propyl paraben um, and that is one example of the parabens that they're finding. Propyl paraben was one specific um, paraben that was mentioned in the study to be found in numerous different fish um, and it seems to have a long lasting impact on waterways. So it's interesting to um, find that all of these different products ranging from our microbeads and then more microbeads all the way to our um, self tan and then finally to our chlorine shampoo. All of these different products um, can contain parabens and can be very dangerous for the environment. And they don't just wash off your face and disappear. They don't just dissipate until it doesn't matter anymore. No, they are residually present on um, surfaces of water for a very, very long time. So um, just because you think that it's gone, it really isn't. And it could come back to haunt you. It could come back into your own water. So uh, even though um, many studies find that not as present in tap water, it is present in open water sources such as rivers. Rivers are a huge um, sample size where parabens are present. Finally, this takes us to um, something that I was really excited to find. I was downstairs looking for cleaning products, actually just looking for the rag, um, and I found this. I was so excited to find this. This bottle is made out of 100% plastics that would have been bound for the ocean. Now you can argue that most plastics are bound for the ocean, so that's not a huge feat, but I think it's really great to see massive companies such as um, SC Johnson taking steps to reduce their environmental impact, even though they are certainly major contributors as well, but this is a good, it's a good show, you know? I was excited to see this. Um, it's always great for people to recognize that ocean-bound microplastics are an incredibly dangerous thing and will likely cause health crises if nothing is done about them, so this is a small step. I don't know how many of these bottles were manufactured, but just opening my cupboard and seeing that there's a recognition of microplastics, specifically ocean-bound microplastics. Um, I thought that that was really cool. All right, well that pretty much wraps things up for us. Um, I wanted to say thank you so much for tuning in to another video. Um, today I think we learned a lot on how many different household items can contribute to micropollution. So I realized that even True the Troll actually can contribute to micropollution because she has her PVC wings wrapped with nylon line. And so that line breaks down into little um, yellow fibers that I had all over my basement while I was wrapping them. And I'm sure that when we're trawling her across the water, she might be contributing to micropollution by slowly just um, releasing those microfibers. There's a lot of different scary sources of microfibers um, and micropollution. There's microbeads, fibers, um, nerd whatever you want to call them but when it comes down to it it all will be centered around your lifestyle choices what are you doing to help the environment how are you going to make a difference are you going to continue to purchase products that you know have microbeads just because they feel good and might help your acne um, or are you willing to maybe seek out a new source maybe a more natural um, acne treatment or um, maybe look for different products for your home for your body um, 
your clothes, whatever you want to do, uh, that you know are just a little bit more eco-conscious. I encourage you to do your research, find out more. Um, I was able to find all these products with a quick what are common um, household products that contribute to micropollution. So if you do your research, you will find that a lot of different things in your home, concerningly enough, um, are contributing to micropollution, but that doesn't mean that they have to stay there. You can make a conscious decision to change your lifestyle choices um, and help the environment. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, I'm so excited to see you here. And I was really excited to share with you what I found just from 15 minutes of walking around my house. So. Take a second, do the same in your own home. Um, maybe you could consider a little bit of spring cleaning and I think you'll learn a lot about your lifestyle choices and how you can be a little bit more conscious about your decisions. Thanks so much and I'll see you guys later.